MET to the calves, in particular PIR, post isometric relaxation. The calves, a name for two muscles that we tend to group together. The gastrocnemius, the most superficial, and soleus, which lies deep to the gastrocnemius. Let's take a quick look at the soleus. It originates on the fibula and the medial line of tibia, so it doesn't cross the knee. It then inserts down into the calcaneus via the calcaneal tendon, or the Achilles tendon as it's more commonly known. It acts across the ankle and its primary action is plantar flexion. In order to stretch the soleus, we want to move the ankle into dorsiflexion. But in case the gastrocnemius is shorter or tighter than the soleus, it is good to do this with the knee in flexion or the knee bent as this will slacken the gastrocnemius and ensure that our stretch is targeted more towards the soleus. So that's a key point in how we will do this technique. Knee is bent. Typical range of motion of dorsiflexion is about 20 degrees. Now let's take a look at the gastrocnemius and how it differs. The gastrocnemius originates across the knee, so on the femur itself. It originates on both the medial and lateral condyles of the femur. And again, common to the soleus, it inserts down to the calcaneus via the calcaneal or Achilles tendon. But given it crosses two joints, it has two actions. It assists in flexion of the knee and also in dorsiflexion. So how do we stretch the gastrocnemius? Again, common with the soleus, dorsiflexion will stretch the gastrocnemius. But this time we want the knee in extension and that will help us to target the ankle joint, in particular gastrocnemius. Normal range of motion is again approximately 20 degrees. So the key difference when applying our MET technique is that with the gastrocnemius we want to do it with an extended knee, hence a straight leg. So let's take a look at both techniques and we can see in which range of motion our client is restricted, straight leg or bent or through our palpation or diagnosis understand whether we want to target soleus or the gastrocnemius. MET for the gastroc and the soleus. So we're going to start with the soleus first and the soleus doesn't cross the knee. So if we want to target the soleus with our muscle energy technique we want to do so with the knee in about 90 degrees of flexion. Okay. Now when we test the range of motion, it's going to give us a truer view as to whether or not the soleus is causing any restriction in the range of motion. So can you just pull your toes down towards the bed? Lovely, so not bad here at all. And relax. And then we're just going to do a passive range of motion test. Actually, that's a really lovely smooth movement. So she doesn't really need this, but I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Okay, so we're going to move to that first barrier about here and when you're ready push up into my arm meet my resistance lovely 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 big deep breath in out and relax let it go lovely so we've got 10 seconds until we feel that relax some people relax straight away others take a few seconds and then gently move to the next barrier and relax the foot lovely and hold at that next point for 10 seconds And repeat and again push up into my forearm 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 big deep breath in out and relax lovely once you feel it completely let go simply move to the next barrier what's interesting is to feel does the foot want to rotate in or out and what happens when you try and keep it straight so targeting different fibers of the soleus and we're just going to hold this last one for 20 seconds. Again, you might do it three, four times, depending on what that client needs and the gains you're getting between each one. And relax. Next, we're going to look at the gastrocnemius. So it crosses the knee onto the femur, onto those condyles. So we want to test the range of motion with a straight leg. That will give us an indication as to whether the gastroc is also causing an issue and also help us target those fibres more appropriately. Next, with the gastrocnemius, it crosses the knee. So it's important that we test the ankle range of motion when the knee is in extension, so a straight leg. 
We want to shuffle our clients down so that the whole ankle hinge is off the end of the bed, which will allow us to move freely through that joint. In terms of range of motion testing, we can either use our leg, okay, so we can connect with our knee and test in this way, or if that's uncomfortable for you, you can also apply the MET in a seated position. So as always, we're going to start with an active range of motion test. So can you flex your toes towards your head, please? Lovely. And relax. So again, not too bad. Definitely less range than when we did it with a bent knee. And I'm just going to do a passive range of motion test. So again, feels much tighter on the outside, so those lateral belly of the gastroc. So next, we're going to come to that first barrier and push into my knee. Please just meet my pressure. Lovely. Ten nine eight seven six five four three big deep breath in out and relax so again just waiting until you feel the foot completely relax and then just move to the next barrier hold it for 10 seconds and again when you're ready 10 percent of your power push into my knee that's it ten nine eight seven Six, five, four, three big deep breath in, out, and relax. Lovely. So she's relaxing very easily now and simply moving to the next barrier. As I said, if this position is uncomfortable for you, you can come to the floor and we're still going to leverage that weight from back to front. And one more. So meet my pressure, my elbows in my waist. Seven, six, five, four, Three big deep breaths in, out, and relax, lovely. And we're gonna hold that final point for 20 seconds. And relax. And an active range of motion test, so pull your toes towards your head. Much better, and relax and just a passive range of motion test. So again, a much smoother movement, still a little bit tighter on the outside, but overall, much better range.